Floyd's death has sparked a huge protest against racism and the police killings of black Americans. New charges have been announced against all of the sacked police officers present at the death of the African-American George Floyd in Minneapolis. The charge against Derek Chauvin has been elevated to second-degree murder, court documents have shown. The other three officers previously uncharged face counts of aiding and abating murder. Floyd's death has sparked huge protests across the U.S. against racism and the police killings of black Americans. The vast majority of demonstrations over the past eight days have been peaceful, but some have turned violent and curfews have been imposed in a number of cities. Joining us now from London is Michelle McKinney Hammond. She is the best-selling author of over 40 books, a popular international speaker, relationship expert and life coach. Thank you very much for joining us on the news. You're welcome. What is your perspective on the ongoing protest in some parts of the US and the UK in respect of the killing of George Floyd? Well, chaos usually happens before change. So hopefully after everyone has expressed themselves, we will have a plan to sustain change and move it forward so that this doesn't have to be revisited. Uh, I, I feel that I think that we've got a new generation of people rising up in America that were not familiar with the past struggle because their parents isolated them from that in order to give them a better life. So now they're learning uh, firsthand that it is a struggle that we share as a people. Um, it is ingrained in the system. And as they grow, they need to have a plan to strategically take seats at the table so that they can make a new tomorrow for themselves. Do you honestly see a global paradigm shift in the face of all these protests and public outcry that will be tangible? Most definitely. I think that most people are sick and tired of being sick and tired. You know, there's a saying that until the pain of change is greater than the pain of staying the same, you won't change. Until the pain of staying the same is greater than the pain of change, you won't change. I think we've reached that place. And I don't know if it's a combination of all things. We're fighting two viruses at the same time, the virus of, of uh, the pandemic and the virus of racism, and they both take our breath away. So there's definitely a spiritual link happening there. But what are we going to do with the truth that's been exposed? How will we handle it? Will we just uh, protest or will we begin to make strategies uh, be put into place to move us forward as a world so that these things don't continue to occur? I think everyone is aware now that change needs to happen, but how will we bring that change into being? Uh, we keep talking about change and a lot of persons are a bit conflicted as to, in specific terms, what is the protest targeted at changing so that everyone is clear? Well, I think that we're targeted at changing systemic racism that's ingrained in the system and even legal, legal to be racist. So policies need to change. Um, policemen, it's interesting, I was looking down a list of all the different riots that have occurred down through time, and most of them had to do with some form of police brutality, which means the system has to change. They have to be vetted. They need to be educated. They're not vetting these people. They're not educated. Um, so anything sneaks in. In the states especially, a lot of uh, supremacists and KKK members are signing up for the police force and taking their place. And then the good cops don't out the road cops, um, not realizing they're putting their own lives in danger as of right now. So I think that uh, the whole police system has to be turned over. They uh, need to take the money out of their coffers when these things happen and people are sued. And when they have to pay, they won't play anymore. So I think that there's a whole overturning of the system that has to happen. Uh, we're having similar protests here in Nigeria, and maybe not at that scale, but we're having situation where police kill a young girl, there's the one of Tina uh, who was uh, killed by a stray bullet the other day. And we also have the gang rape of an undergraduate in Benin City, a state in Nigeria, who lost her life um, as well. 
Is there an expected way to react and respond to all of these doom and gloom that seems to be perpetrating um, our society? Well, I think that the alarm has been raised that it's no longer acceptable. A lot of times these things were swept under the rug, and so people felt licensed to do it and increase in that type of activity. I think we've reached a new place in society where we're saying, no, this is not acceptable. And once that starts, then policies must follow that crack down on these individuals so that they're not so motivated to try these things or so readily. Oh, I wonder what's the place of mindset now? Um, I, what would you say to people? Because there's a lot of anxiety, a lot of pain, a lot of you know, pressure, both mentally and physically, to act in a certain way or be a certain way. What would you say to people at this time? Well, we have to have an uncommon mindset. That's why I, I'm teaming up with Lanre Olushula and uh, Tim Story to do a masterclass this weekend on the uncommon mindset, because what separates us from the pack is thinking differently. When we think differently, we do things differently. Our language changes, our actions change, and we affect change. We cannot continue to just go with the flow and go along with the masses because the masses, for the most part, don't know where they're going. But people of uncommon mindset have a clear vision. They begin to implement strategies to enact that vision, and they are the ones that end up succeeding at what they put their hand to. So it is crucial to have an uncommon mindset in times like this, thinking outside of the box. Thank you very much, Michelle, for joining us on the news. Welcome.